we go, do all the typical things. There we are. This will be a bit of a weird scuffed recording in and out because I'm going to be periodically shifting things over. I totally didn't just come from something else where I'm meeting with people about things. Haha. A hundred percent prepared. But I did bring notes, so it's okay. Uh, Let's go. All right. So, for those of you who uh, do not know what this is, uh, in previous instances, um, the T1 team and myself have done lore raids, and we have taken a look in one special moment at each raid, uh, and we've basically just sat down and said, like, hey, this is the story of what's going on at this moment in Destiny. These are all the different threads and tangents. And we're here to sort of, you know, explain all of that, because lots of it is a little obscured, and lots of it is worth diving into. And it's some of the most important story in the entire game, so hey, enjoy this however long it takes. It's probably going to be an hour and a bit worth of stuff, just going through each encounter, explaining what's going on, talking about some of the stuff in the background, and answering questions. So yeah. Yeah, but and to piggyback off of that, like, the, uh... I honestly had no idea what was going on after the end of the campaign. As I think most people... <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> as most people felt. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Traveler shot a beam at a pyramid ship. And and then here we are. I don't really know. It's essentially like... I'm assuming the raid story and lore is a little more clear? Yeah, there's some clarity to it. And there's some little bits and pieces that we can absolutely go ahead and explain. But I think the reality of it is that it starts over on Neomuna and it... Oh, okay, let's start at the very beginning. It starts in that first cutscene from Lightfall where the Traveler shoots a massive beam at this here pyramid ship, which, needless to say, has caused all of these roots to grow. Uh, the source of the roots is out there on the horizon, which is a blooming tree of silver wings. And the important thing about all of this, of course, is that trees of silver wings are not very well understood, but they are to do with the light. It is something that we found before in the Season of Arrivals on Io. As we saw mm -hmm. that go through all the different seasons, we also saw that it got corrupted, but we know that this is now a part of the major power of the Traveler. It's this power of growth and terraforming, and you can see that kind of wild, unleashed power all around you. Particularly as we go through the raid, you'll start to see how the roots of this Tree of Silver Wings, which are already pretty gnarly and all over the place, literally start to tear apart the Witness's pyramid ship here. The superstructure cracks and frays and it's all over the place and it's only held in suspension by little bits and pieces of, I suppose, whatever's holding the pyramid together in the first place, which maybe is <laughs> some kind of power of the darkness. But regardless, the roots grow and everything else gets cracked up. And that's kind of one of the bigger themes of the raid overall, is growth. Also, Sick. When you come here, you will, of course, have heard the chuckling and laughter of Nezarek. Nezarek themselves is something uh, which was teased to us after the campaign of Lightfall. If you did a lot of the questing around Neomuna and you had a Nezarek piece of gear equipped, you could actually hear some alternate dialogue. Normally, if nothing was equipped that had anything to do with Nezarek, it just appeared as unintelligible whispers that was you know, all around within the public events. You guys grinded for day one. You probably saw some of this. However, yep. if you had Nezarek's Whisper, which was the legendary glaive from Season of the Haunted, I believe some people were saying any Season of the Haunted weapon worked, but I can't confirm that personally. If you had the exotic Warlock Helmet, Nezarek's Sin, or if you had Delicate Tomb, the fusion rifle from Season of the Plunder, all of these weapons were related to Nezarek, even Revision Zero from Season of the Seraph, which is... Really interesting, because that means that there's potential Nezarek links to things like what happened on the moon and the original haunting that led to the moon lost sectors. Point is, if you had an item that was related to Nezarek, these whispers were no longer unintelligible. You could actually hear what Nezarek was saying. And also, throughout the entire city, there was this clear indication that there were members of the civilian population who were experiencing terrible things. You know, there were nightmares and no one was getting any good sleep. Everyone could persistently have these dreams where they were seeing only one name repeated over and over, and that name was Nezarek. And it really started to get kind of... I mean, it was getting to the point where it showed little bits of information where it seemed like it was getting out of hand. 
right? Like, it was getting to the moment where people were starting to sabotage certain key supplies. And there was the first ever report of someone who had murdered their own spouse in cryo. You know, like, these little bits and pieces are perhaps indicative of the power of Nezarek because we'll talk about it a little bit later, but this is absolutely something that he does. He causes chaos, he causes panic, and he causes terror, which he then makes a very big deal out of feeding off of. So yeah, that's what drew us here in the first place, is this unwinding chaos in Neomuna and this voice that draws us here to this pyramid. And as he says, good, you have arrived. You no longer need these weapons of Nezarek or these artifacts to actually hear that. You can just hear his voice now. And that's kind of a big deal. As we move, yeah. ahead, as we move ahead, though, this is where the story really starts to unfurl. Because, yeah, there's a yeah. few bits and pieces we should step in and take a look at before we get to first encounter. Because, yeah, first of I all... I had a question after playing the campaign. How did, how, how, did, how did an entire city get convinced to digitize themselves? Because <laughs> after living through the pandemic, I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> so there's actually an entire law book called Last Days, which talks about what it's like for the citizens of Neomuna just before they digitize and go into the cloud arc. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things like regret. People are not okay with it for the most part. You know, it's oh, also... So they actually do touch on it. Yeah, they do. And it's one of these moments of like, for all the different reasons, which I think is pretty identifiable to all of us, right? Like there are some people sitting there being like, you know, the cloud arc does not feel like home. It's this barren digital place that doesn't have any love to it. And then there are other people being like, look, I know we're here for the safety of it. I was one of the politicians that voted for this and put it to the council and consensus of everyone in the city and we all voted that this was the right move but i wonder if i regret this you know like th mm -hmm. these ideas are openly discussed and it's it's very much one of those things of going forward the longer people spend in the cloud arc the more stuff we may hear about that but yeah before we jump any further though we have two things if you haven't already get grabbed it this was the first law book but i'm sure everybody has it and this is also something which we can uh, take a quick peek at, which is a statue of Nezarek. Reason for this being significant at all is that during the opening cutscene of Lightfall, you can actually see the Witness passing by a statue that looks just like this before the beam hits the ship. So we know that this is all over the place. The reason I wanted to touch on this is that Nezarek here does not look quite the same as we see in the final boss encounter. And I think there's very clear and obvious reasons for that, which we'll get to in a moment. The other thing, and the thing I wanted to put in everyone's heads for a second, is if you really think about it, this is probably not the first statue of Nezarek to ever exist. And the reason I say that is because Nezarek has a sort of cult following, not in the kind of innocuous way that a streamer or a celebrity might gain some kind of cult following, they have an actual series of people that follow their ways called the Acolytes of Nezarek, and we'll touch on them more, but if anyone gets a weapon drop, let me know and I can tell you about each of the individual Acolytes that it's related to. Also, Sick. Nezarek was uh, worshipped by the Scions, and they did some pretty terrible things in Nezarek's favour and in his name. So if ever you do see something like that going on, it's worth remembering that, hey, Nezarek's influence extends really far beyond what we've seen in the world of Destiny thus far. Like, there are people out there thousands of light years away who maybe even still speak his name. So he's a big deal as far as everything is concerned, and he's not just a disciple, he's, I mean, a god is actually a pretty accurate way of putting things because there are people who actually do worship Nezarek. Speaking of which, I uh, can, someone got the uh, red border thing. Yeah, yeah I, typed it in, I typed it in chat. Nice. Um, cool, side cool, cool. note, too, that I, I haven't done this raid before, so if I'm randomly like looking at stuff or if I don't know what's going on, I probably will need some pointers. Uh, yeah, yeah, Absolutely yeah, perfect. Do yeah. not worry. All good. That is completely fine. What's with the, like, uh, uh, the animals about? There's like... They just architecture. Do you mean the thing like that Gix and I are jumping like on? Yeah. These bad boys? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we saw. Right? Yeah, these are segments of a worm. We did see this in Rolk's pyramid ship too, but it makes me wonder whether there's a bigger connection here. Rolk having worms like this in his pyramid ship was actually indicative of the fact that Rolk was actively trying to breed an army and was actively helping the hive create more of their soldiers. 
having a segment of it here perhaps is just a curiosity for the witness themselves. Because we've got to remember, this is not Nezarex pyramids, so to speak. This is literally the witnesses. So the witness having some small dissected part of a worm god does not really tell us much. But for the moment, it does tell us that they at least have some interest in those subjects. Because remember, it's thanks to Rolk that those were pulled into the fold. And yeah, the entire thing of having them here maybe is a nod to things that may be coming in the future. I don't know about everybody else, but... When I hear the term Season of the Deep, aka what next season is going to be called, I uh, I think of hive things, and I think of worm yep. gods, and little bits and pieces like this make me wonder what the Witness's relationship to the worms really was. So Wait, so this is the Witness's ship? Yes, this is the Witness's... Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, this is the Witness's pyramid ship. Like, it's a big deal, not just on its own, even before it got hit by the Traveler, like... If we were raiding this on its own, it would be a totally different beast even still. So yeah, scary. I had no idea. Wait, so there's a statue of Nazarek in the Witness's ship? Yes. Okay. Indeed. And uh, it's worth remembering as well. Oh, well, well, reach first encounter and I'll show you. But yeah, it's uh, basically the case that you'll sit there and you'll see that Nazarek has been entombed here for a while. So yeah. Oh, that makes more sense. I have my chat off, which I'm going to change in a second, but I'm not going to touch these because I will not have that message. So I, I've never even been here before. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> That's for the retro. It's just dark. I know. Uh, okay. Wait, dark. I'm with Disco. Where are you guys? I don't know. I don't even know where I am, and I've done this right like 20 <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, there's a hole. This is. Oh, you, don't oh, have oh. To, you don't have to go down. There. Yeah. So if you're doing, oh, oh. yeah, if you're doing the red border chest, there's three uh, little spirally things near the beginning, um, which you need to take a look at. There'll be a mixture of light and dark. There are three points in the raid where you'll go and you'll actually activate them. That's one of the three points. If you do all three, you get a red border chest. So that's one of the uh, secrets that ultimately oh, ends up doing I'm assuming its thing. they fixed that, right? I can't... I'll be completely honest. I've been making so many videos, I've not had as much time to raid they, outside they of the fixed. first week. It, it's fixed. There's only the second week that is bugged. Oh, nice. Cool. Wait, so... I feel like... We're, are we on top of the ship? We are within the ship. So if you actually uh, take a look towards everything on the outsides, the reason you don't see walls here necessarily is that it's so vast but also mm -hmm. because the Traveler has completely and utterly changed its structure. Like, if you okay. look out to where the things are in the distance with the actual tree, you can see that they're completely tearing this place apart. So, right. like, when you oh, actually... Oh, so that this is the hole that we're looking at. That's why yeah, we see the Traveler. See the, you can yeah. see yeah, the yeah, I see it at the top. Yeah, yeah, Indeed. yeah. The side there. You can yeah. follow the circle. Ah, I actually never noticed that before. Oh. yeah. And it's, uh, it, I mean, aside from being just one of the prettiest skyboxes in the entire game, if you look all the way far out there to the very edge, you can start to see the kind of like edges of the pyramid that have been interjected with mm -hmm. something different. So in this vague direction that I'm shooting, I'm not sure if you can see those bullets, you can see kind of straight lines upwards uh, that will sort of pass around in a circle towards things. Some of it's clearly the structure of the pyramid and other bits of it I think is worth pointing out because it kind of goes in a circle, uh, and that's reminiscent of Io too. If you remember where the Tree of Silver Wings was and where the pyramid was sitting above it on Io during the season of Arrival, it was sitting above a thing called the Cradle, which was this sort of ring of concentric circles, and the Tree of Silver Wings was at its center. That same ring of concentric circles is what we actually fly into in that opening cutscene of the raid, and uh, you can start to see bits and pieces of that off in the background. It's a little bit hard to see, but that's what's formed around this tree of silver wings. You know, it's a mark of the traveler and a way of showing that this place has been touched by the light. Which, yeah, it's a small detail. It's a little bit tricky to see from these perspectives, but it's really awesome. That is, that is sick. Also, we can't go far into this encounter um, without starting it, if I remember correctly. But I'm going to go ahead and point this out for just a moment here because I think it's actually really important. Most of the raid uh, is all about growth and it's all about change and it's all about light and dark. So lots of the environments around you are either similar or are in fact the same environment that you'll see continuously over and over again. And it's one of these moments of the only thing you're starting to really see is the change of the actual roots growing and how they've started to break apart this temple complex, right? 
The thing mm. that absolutely does not change in this raid whatsoever is that spike and the root that is piercing through it. It's the one that has the massive sort of... I think I'd use the word key at the end of it there. The yeah. keyblade. Indeed. It looks like a big old keyblade. <laughs> uh, that structure is worth talking about, but we'll talk about it when we get to Final Encounter, because as I'm sure some of you already know, Final Encounter and First Encounter actually take place in the same location. It's just it will be dramatically changed by the time we get there. So when you take a look at this entire environment, remember the root, remember the pyramid spike there, and uh, remember all of that nonsense, because it's not going to be the last time that we see it. But yeah. All right. So it's a big circle. The red structure, right? Essentially, yeah. You, you, you end where you begin. All right. That's probably the way I put it. Uh, I'm going to... Do I want to make significant weapon changes, or do I just want to... No, you're, I think... you're good, I think. Right. Uh, who are you going to have run? Gonna Baller? Or Disco? Yeah. Both of you? Yeah, we can both do it. Okay. Uh, so, Megs, you haven't done this. Pretty much we're just going to need to kill ads for them, which is going to okay. be the theme of the whole raid. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm then... down. There's going to be a big tormentor either on the left or the right. We kill Az and we kill tormentor. Kill Az yeah, is just back and forth over and over again. Yeah. yeah. It will be. Uh, There's scions that you can kill as well. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Scions appear in the bubbles. We... Killing both the scions spawns the tormentor. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So when they spawn, just get prioritized scions? Yeah, they'll be in their little bubble. So just walk into the bubble, melee them, and then. Okay. Yeah. And after scions are dead, tormentor is the big priority also because it extends our timer. And uh, without the timer there, we will wipe. So yeah, all little things. But we have really fast runners, so that should not be a problem whatsoever. All right. Right, ready when everyone else is. Let's go. You can go for it. Oh, I see one over there. Nah, Luna's got it. Tormentor spawned, they are left, left side. Yep. Probably save that one. Got the champion. He's already okay. dead. Hell yeah. Alright. That is probably one of the quickest first quarters of that that I've ever seen. <laughs> but then again, this is T1, so you guys are one of the better teams in the entire world. Thank you, thank you. Got one Scion, Tormentor is left side. Here we go. Arge. Sizable. <laughs> Humongous. <laughs> Humongous. <laughs> Amogus. I feel like there is a moment during a raid where if I'm just stuck in the concentration, it takes one thing to be said to activate me. I don't know. <laughs> Normally it's very much the case with my uh, my other raid team. <laughs> they just say some nonsense. I felt that. Ooh, there we go. That's first. Uh, they are left. Okay. It really is remarkable how much of this is just sort of <laughs> so straightforward. It's a very, lab. it's a very nice first encounter if you were looking for the uh, day one to be a breeze and oh man, oof, this is good. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, good for the sake of ease. Let's put it that way. But uh, yes, it's. Uh, I don't know. I I was like, the like dungeon mechanic was kind of connect the dots, and then this whole raid was kind of connect the dots. Precisely, and it did end up being this. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I wish, lament I wish it. a little more. Yeah, I lament it for the same reasons I think everybody else does on that front of things, but... Right. 
remarking on different bits during the encounters is going to be good fun, I've just realized, because I remember if we were doing this in the old days with Last Wish, it was a bit of a... It was a bit of a mild, stressful thing trying to explain things in the middle of Vault. Meanwhile, we're sitting yeah. here and it's like, cool, I can just murder ads. For this one particular thing, it is surprisingly good. <laughs> Our matter is left, by the way. Got it. Oh, well. There we go. Is it on? More spawns. I think that's Scions. Yeah, Scions are somewhere. Got a boat. Yeah, all the way to the back. This should be right hand side. Yep, right hand Tormentor. Okay, we're getting lost now. Yeah, so it is no coincidence that in this first encounter you are starting to see Tormentors here. This is the point at which the darkness in the raid is as strong as it can possibly get. And this is uh, right next to Nezarek, which we'll talk about in a second after grabbing loot. Now, I can't remember exactly what spawns from here. I think it's Briar's Contempt, Arms, and uh, the Grenade Launcher, Caraxus's Distress. Am I right on that? Has anybody got a weapon? Uh, I got a yeah, shotgun. Ah, Ness's Ablation. Yeah. So every single one of those weapons, like I said, is named after an acolyte of Nezarek. Nezarek himself, of course, god of pain, but also of many other things. He is worshipped as this kind of locus of terror and fear, and he feeds off of all of these different individual aspects of power. Worshipping Nezarek is something which some families, including the family of the leader of the Acolytes called Michael, yeah, it's something that apparently has gone on for generations. Michael inherited it from one of his parents, including all the customs and practices of it, including tormenting somebody as a process of initiation, literally extracting their fear. And yeah, the entire thing can be really gnarly. The acolyte in question for Nessa, I believe their story is interesting because they may, I need to get to this particular bit, but they may have been someone who encountered the Drifter at the fourth tomb of Nezarek, which he went ahead and bragged that he uh, went to at a certain point when he was talking to the person who wielded the last word, Shin Malfa. So there's some really relevant story stuff on that front of things, because saying that Nezarek has multiple tombs and all this kind of discombobulated stuff, it's actually relevant to where he is right now in this moment in the raid. And okay. uh, that is the fact that he's dead. Right? He's dead and he's talking <laughs> I thought we to turned us. him into tea. We turned some of him into tea, but okay. there is a little bit of it left, and it's probably worth explaining that at this moment in time. So, Nezarek originally was one of the disciples of the Witness, and then was murdered by Savathun. He actually goes over this later in the raid with some of the dialogue, but for the moment, you know, it's just this thing of like, hey, he was entombed in his pyramid on the moon, and at that moment there's the problem of fallen raiders. A bunch of fallen raiders came along and basically cut up his corpse and used all of the dark energy within as a means of power. Great fallen pirates, which we learned about in the season of the plunder, all had these different artifacts of Nezarek, and it got to the point where the only thing that was left was Nezarek's head. Just the head, mm. nothing else. This is what the witness apparently found and recovered and placed within this pyramid spike here, and the reason why I'm floating around here is if you do climb up on these roots, you can actually get a great view inside, and you can see Nezarek's slowly regenerating body. The reason Wait. why this is regenerating is because it's been pierced by one of the roots of the Traveler. So if you go to where Bullerhorn is right now, you can stand on some of those roots, you can actually look inside, and you'll see Nezarek is literally just a helmet and a torso and some roots right now. They are regrowing. You know what they look like in the final encounter, you know what they look like eventually, so when you do actually get there, this will be a fully formed boss. But for the moment, they're reaching out from this place between life and death. I believe the, uh, I'm not sure if it's the route Luna's on, but there is one that's really close, where you can just take a look inside, I think. It's the one I'm on right now. It's actually, yeah. like, you could see you right in. Yeah, there you go. You can actually look in and there's no, like, weird diffraction from the glass, it's just a straight shot view. But yeah, Nezarek being inside there and being half-grown is 
you know, consequence of the Traveler's actions here and a consequence of him having been cut up. And yeah, the cut up different bits that we collected in Season of the Plunder was the reason we were making the Nescafe, to get back to the original question. Okay. So yeah. This is the door I never the knew... Name. Is the what? The door thing and the Traveler that the Witness went through, is it a name? Uh, we just know it as the portal right now. I don't believe it's got a better name or a better, like, the Traveler classification. Sea. The Traveler Sea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, listen, the Bondo Sea exists in this raid as well, apparently, so, you know. <laughs> they nerfed, they nerfed, they nerfed it. the Bondo Sea. <laughs> they nerfed There's it. <laughs> oh. I no longer know if this is uh, making it past the YouTube guidelines, but I'll assume it will. It's fine. They don't know what's going on. Okay, so this... <laughs> This little bit of dialogue here is actually important. Sensations, tingle of the fingertips, the power is familiar yet different. It's invigorating. Nezarek here is talking about the light, right? He's talking about how it's regrowing his body and how he's starting to return thanks to all of this. So as we move through the raid and as we complete certain encounters, there are going to be two key moments where we will speed up that regrowth and we will help to deliver Nezarek a new body. Uh, it is worth remembering that we need to go ahead and do this so that we can actually kill him a second time, but I mean, you know, it does feel a little bit Last Wish-like, where Guardians come along and they, they can't help but fuck up a situation in order to uh, fix it again. <laughs> you know, little bits and pieces, as Are you do. Are we the bad guys? You know, you can't help but ask. Are we the bad guys? Hide the drama. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's me. Hi, I am the problem. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Moving through all of this, though, um, yeah, you can actually start to see where we are heading next. The scission encounter. Of course, all of the traversal here, with a few exceptions for temple complexes, is done via the routes that have been spread across the entire place. We are going to make these roots grow at the end of the next encounter when we do the little puzzle bit between second and third encounter. And that is actually way more important than uh, most of the other stuff that happens in the raid. It's very understated, but the entire raid changes at that moment. And yeah, significance of it should not be uh, lost in any of these particular <laughs> points. Classic. Ah, the uh, consistent jump pads. Okay, you just head over here. Yeah, they. You didn't do anything wrong. They're like, just not good. Wait. I should have just. Okay. Okay. Next one. It is a hundred percent what I experienced on day one, where I was consistently being thrown down into the abyss by the thing. Yep. Same. Wow. I think our team just said don't use the jump pads. So <laughs> just, like, just, just, second wipe. just like skate across. We we're like just eager across. <laughs> I mean, not wrong. It is probably the more consistent way. But yeah, I, uh, oof, God, <laughs> sore memories of day one mostly come from second encounter for me to be honest. Yep, same. Ooh, here we go. Is that the jump puzzle or what is that? The second encounter, it's like there's like two sides that you got to like jump back and forth using those lifts, or that's the intended way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think somebody do that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but the lift, yeah, I mean, you just saw the lifts are like the most inconsistent thing ever. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for day one, it was just like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. We love RNG. Is this guy important? The aspiration of the Nazarok? Uh, no, they're basically just different cabal who are sitting there in the service of Nezarek. They're called aspirants because they're the stronger ones of the bunch and, you know, they will hopefully aspire to one day do his will, but for the most part it is just named enemy is named enemy. Uh, is it here? I'm no. so glad you said aspire because I had no idea what that word meant until you said that. Oh, okay, there you go. Here's the thing too, it's, you know, that's the way that you, uh learn anything with regards to that stuff. So yeah, glad to have provided such experience. Anyway, um, jumping is hard. What am I doing? So yeah, uh, channel your inner deflating balloon. Indeed. You're on a warlock in your defense though. 
I mean, I've, I'm used to Warlock Jump at this point. I've, I've been doing uh, it for nine years. I have no excuse. That's why we <laughs> I felt that. You know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we've got Secret Chest coming up at some point, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's like a thing like here as well, like a lore thing, I think. Yes, there should be a lore thing here. That's right here. Yeah, there we go. Worth picking up. While we're here for a moment, lore books in this raid. Really weird. Because the lore books in this raid uh, do not actually discuss Nezarek that much. It is lore from the Witness's Pyramid ship, and therefore it discusses the nature of darkness a whole bunch. And each of them, or most of them at least, come from a different perspective. So every single time you pick one up, you're going to be hearing about the different words of each individual person on said aspect of darkness. So for example, oh, fuck, I just killed Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a sec. <laughs> okay. Oops. All right. Yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. As, All I, right. as I was we saying, are. for example, <laughs> There is one where you are looking at the words Bro. of an unknown disciple. Um, a disciple who we don't know about. Nobody has ever seen anything about them in-game. There's nothing going on with that. None of that nonsense, yada yada yada. It's all just completely mysterious. There's another from the perspective of Savathun. There's another from the perspective of Mara Sov, because again, Awoken are both light and dark. You know, there's a bunch of different stuff going on with the perspectives of darkness, and the whole point of the raid law book is to shed some light on that. Pun not intended, but you get my point. <laughs> but yeah, no, the uh, the whole thing of the raid law book, nothing to do with the actual raid itself and with Nezarek. He's mentioned, I believe, once in that law book by the unknown disciple. And there are some really, uh, you know, there are some really interesting things in there. Like, it talks about, for example, the birth of what I believe, at least, is the birth of the Heart of the Black Garden, and how it got put there. It talks about how the Disciples might not necessarily even know what the final shape is, and all of them have their own different conceptions of what it might be. There's a ton of different stuff there, but it's all, yeah, basically just in this place of mystery, where there is no single consistent topic, right? Right. So yeah, that's uh, lore book is something where if you're going to dive into it, just keep that in mind. It is nothing to do with the actual core bits of the raid. This next bit, though, so, is good fun. So all the disciples have a different idea of what the final shape will be. So they is it just kind of like whatever they envision and whatever they want? Here's the thing. The witness supposedly has its central knowledge of what the final shape is, but it doesn't really confirm any of it to them. And some of the ideas actually conflict with each other. So, I mean, the best example is Nezarek himself, right? Nezarek mm -hmm. is a final god of pain, right? For pain to exist, there have to be things in the world to experience that pain. You know, it's very grim in that sense of like, hey, I want a ton of life around so that I can make all of it suffer. The Hive actually have the complete opposite conception of this, right? The Hive sit there and they say, we only want strong life in the universe because it cuts out the unnecessary suffering, right? I believe right. there's a... is there a... No, that's not. You, Sorry, and one other... Did Yeah, I got the chest. I, uh, I thought there was a lore thing back there, which Paul was leading us to, but no. Um, I, can't, I can't remember what the next one is. But yeah, point is, like, there's totally different conceptions of what the final shape is, and nobody seems to know. So, as you uh, continue to go ahead and actually look into it, it's worth keeping that in mind. The Witness is probably the only one who truly understands it, because otherwise, I mean... Why would it let all of its disciples have such different perspectives of things? You have Nezarek over here looking to encourage worship from followers and encourage pain throughout the universe. And meanwhile, the Hive are there explicitly to quote unquote, liberate life from the pain of its existence, you know? And it's evil no matter what, but it's just, why are these different ideologies of evil existing? Why isn't there one consistent vision? It's one of those key questions that's really brought about by the entire thing. So yeah. So the witness's goal, I'm like, what is its goal? This is what's really interesting. I think we used to have a vague idea, and now right. it's been thrown into complete disarray because the idea was based off of our understanding of the hive, right? They have been our mm -hmm. longest tie to the final shape. 
you know, the basic consensus has always been that the final shape is that which remains when all that has been, that can be removed, has been removed, right? It is the ultimate goal of the universe to reach the final shape, and it will be the last thing at the end of the universe. It is the final shape because it is actually just the only thing that can exist. It's the ultimate evolution of everything. And I mean ultimate in the sense of the word, as in it is the last, right? This is the right. end goal of everything. The witness trying to reach there is something which is kind of weird then, because again, all of these different conflicting things of what the final shape is, they're doesn't seem to be any consensus whatsoever. So yeah, it's... I don't know. The the entire thing about the final shape, thanks to that one entry from the Unknown Disciple in this lore book, has changed everything and has really kind of like thrown a lot of things into disarray, but probably for good reason, because at this point in time, it explains a lot. It explains why Nezarek is so different from all the other disciples. It explains a whole bunch of things about potentially why the Witness can't be trusted, you know, it levels with what the Witness has been doing previously, because we know the Witness lied to the Hive for the entire time, you know? Right, yeah. Whole, yeah, the whole thing basically just pushes us through to this narrative point where when we do finally understand what the Witness thinks the final shape is, we're going to be in a uh, better position to help the other disciples maybe realize that they've been duped this whole time. Is uh, there loads of disciples? We don't know how many there are. We know that we've killed three thus far, those three being Callus, Rolk, and Nezarek. As for all the others that may exist, there's a question as to whether Zivu Arath and Eremis are disciples, but it's not really known. And there is the unknown disciple mentioned in this lore book, but where they are isn't known either. We would probably... If there was nine, would that freak people out? It would definitely freak people out, but I will sit there and say this. Uh, Bungie has been known to throw out a bunch of red herrings with the number nine all over the place. For example, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, so here's the best example the Awoken. You know, when they actually went ahead and forged their first civilization before they came to the reef and all that, they're in a black hole. It's a long story. Point is, everyone on their ship was accounted for except for nine individuals. A red herring, as best we know. But still, fascinating that that number comes up. Either way, point being, red herrings with the nine exist all over the place. I wouldn't necessarily believe anything when it comes to that. Okay. Yeah. Also, the nine is... Oh, man. Uh, talking about them is weird because it's sentient dark matter, and that's... I mean, where do you even start with that? <laughs> I, I, I think I, it's just the nine planets of the solar system, but... Hmm... But then again, what if there's only... That's my personal choice. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the planets... That's my story, I'm sticking to it. In Destiny's Law, the planets do have some kind of life force. They're called Gaia forms, if I'm not mistaken. It's, uh, you know... Oh god, what's the one Titan legs where you can slide and uh, it reflects things? Antaeus Wards? Antaeus Wards, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Antaeus Wards has some information about that, if you are interested. But yeah, the planets... Oh, give that a look. Vaguely alive. Anyway, uh, we can probably explain lore and things about what's going on afterwards. But long story short, we're just going to try and open said flower and get into the main route itself. And from there, we will progress. I'll tell people about flecks of darkness and fields of light after that's all said and done, because that's actually worth talking about when we're inside. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And there's a whole thing where like there's like a progress bar on the wall here. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, this is actually uh, something worth pointing out. So the progress bar on the wall, um, this is actually a symbol which repeats consistently throughout pyramid architecture. It's a little bit hard for people to see right now, but basically when it lights up at the start of the encounter, you will see what we're talking about. That's not only our progress encounter for the, sorry, progress for the encounter towards wipe, uh, but also you see it everywhere, right? So on the Witness's uh, ship, you can also see that that thing that was speared by one of the roots back in First Encounter is similar to that piece of architecture. It's on the side of the upended, the big cube from Vow of the Disciple. When you look in the Vow symbols, the Witness is holding one of them. In the Third Encounter of Root of Nightmares, you can also see it on the floor, and that also highlights as a wipe encounter. It's not known what it is, but it's very clear that it's linked to the uh, Pyramid's architecture. So yeah, the entire thing is just, it's 
pyramid in nature, and that's about as much as we can say. But it is clearly also important, because, I mean, it's everywhere. Like, everywhere. I don't yeah. think it would be uh, fair to confirm what it is or isn't, because, again, genuinely, I don't think anybody truly knows. But yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, so yeah, for this one, we split 3-3. Three, three. Uh, so we'll do... Wait, who's going to run for us? And just do me and Disco again. Okay. Do, should I stay on this other side? Um... Wait, no, with... Yeah, you can come left. Cool. We're pretty much just going to kill... Ads. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to do light after we swap, and then I'll just stay on dark, or do you want to do dark? Yeah, yeah, so what? Uh, dark, light, light, dark. After the uh, light one is done on the other side, I can jump in and grab the ones over here as well, if that's yeah. required. Just to speed we'll things up. Light. But yeah, okay. two, two minute timer. Do you want to zigzag it? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Alright, let's go. I believe in you. Just don't lock the encounter. Oh my god, yeah, don't hit the thing too early. <laughs> I believe that's on our side as well, isn't it? Um, I don't know how that actually locks up. So, from my experience, it's the light side one appears first, and if the dark side uh -huh. one has not finished, uh, uh -huh. and the light team activates their final orb after all five of theirs have been thrown up, like, dark side can finish, but their ads will be immune, basically. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that happened to us like a few time. times day one. Yeah, no, it's the same. <laughs> Not fun. This was primarily, well, this and the lifts was primarily the source of frustration on Encounter 2. Yep. The true final boss. Yeah, some of these guys are going to be immune. Yeah, I saw that. But then the, but they're that, really uh, threatening, so thing, like, you... yeah, yeah, if you stand in it and then th they, they'll hit it, it they'll come around eventually. Okay. Ow. Uh, we, we shoot this here thing and then we can kill the immune dudes. Oh, uh, oh wow, I almost rocketed myself. Okay. All right, now she we... beckons upwards. There we go. Everybody Get on the, the thing. Good luck. Oh. Yep, good luck. Pull the lever, Kronk! Nice. Well, I landed a floor above, but whatever. I don't need to save my tether for anything, right? I can just use it on ads. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Okay. The most threatening thing you'll get in here is like a barrier colossus, and <laughs> that's it. Like, uh -huh. You are all good. I saw someone did a test and they showed that the patrol enemies actually have more health than the raid ones. <laughs> kind of insane, isn't it? Wow. That's crazy. I just think Bungie looks at all this, sees bigger numbers better, and that's what we get for raids now. I think my, uh, I think my raid team presented me with the, one of the more interesting theories, which was that LFG was supposed to launch with this which is why they made this potentially an easier raid. Regardless of whether that's true or not, it's all rumor mill, so it's impossible to confirm, but it's an interesting I premise. I would personally I believe it. The first, second, and boss are meant to be from a dungeon, like the mechanic idea, but I don't know. I, see, I don't think that that theory is true anymore because they had the whole, like, Vidoc. Mm. They kind of, I mean, maybe it is true, I don't know. I mean, regardless of what happens on that side of things, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's a moot point to sit there and look at it. I think the best thing we can do now is just like, hey, you know, this is the things we want for next time. And, yep. plus side, I think they did, uh, I think it was Joe Blackburn in that big interview he did with, uh, the FPS podcast. Uh, they sat there and said, like, hey, final shape is supposed to be the culmination of things. Expect difficulty in raids to match. So, if Sick. nothing else, they have probably heard... But yeah, yeah. Like, I would, uh, I would hope that they would sit there yeah, and prioritize it being more difficult. Yeah, hopefully they go in and just juice final, final shape. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know that the witness is the red boss because when no one can know that right now. But if the witness is the red boss, you'd hope that they'd be uh, juiced. Yeah. What do you think the like reprise raid is gonna be? 
Oh god, I really hope... You know, I know it's easy, and that would make two easy raids for the year, but man, I really hope they do Wrath, Wrath of the Machine. I, I, I hope they do Wrath as well. If they don't do Wrath, I will be slightly disappointed, because god, that thing deserves its time in the sun, and it's such a fun raid. Like, regardless of where you sit on the actual, like, nature of the content, it's fun mm -hmm. as hell. Like, yep. oh, so good. I know some people are thinking they're going to redo Leviathan, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> if they if they redo one of the raids. Hardboard belt for World First. Oof. Yeah, no. If they if they redo, like, Leviathan or something, I will be kind of puzzled. It would be a very interesting choice, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you do you, I guess. Where's the, like, light-up stick thing you guys were talking about? Oh. Uh, as in from First Encounter? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can't see it in uh, second. Oh, right, okay. Also, Lamau, I totally did not just f***ing get sent down one level by the lift. <laughs> mm. Look at him make the run back. It's fine, it's <laughs> fine. Yeah, I'm watch. It's fine, I'm on the right side now too. It's okay. Uh, there we go. Lift's totally not the bane of my existence. It's fine. Okay, so yeah, uh, the tree is here. Or at least the roots of the tree are here. Um, this is where the most important and most understated thing in the raid happens, at least in my opinion. It is impossible to truly know what's going on here, but observation gives us everything we need. I want everybody first to take a look outwards, yonder, over towards the tree. Note, it yonder. is current. It is currently a bulb. It is not truly grown. It's kind of still unfurling. Remember what that looks like, and remember what it will look like after we've done what's going on in here. This, I think, is the most important part of the raid as far as the actual narrative is concerned, because in here, we grow the tree of silver wings, as best I can tell. Now, by doing this, we are using the field of light and flex of darkness mechanic. This is, of course, the bit where you basically take one of these... I'm looking at right now and just go ahead and link it to whatever's next in the chain, which for me is over in this direction. By completing this encounter uh, mechanic in this little tiny bit between, you are feeding both the energy of darkness and the energy of light into the roots. And that bit's, I think, very important going forward. You take your fluxes of darkness and your fields of light and you basically sit there and progress things. But the fact that it's feeding into the tree with both dark and light is what's so suspect and so strange. Isn't it a thing of light? This is a thing of light, and it's being fed light, but it's also being fed the flex of darkness, which is what's so really like weird. Corrupted? Not necessarily, because corruption, I think, is something which comes from something that's distinctly evil. But here, with this growth, I don't think it seems evil so to speak. However, not only are we growing the tree here, we're also growing Nezarek. So every single time this happens, Nezarek starts to talk. He talks about how he can taste paracausality, which, for those of you who are up on Destiny Law lingo, is basically he can taste the energy of light and dark. Or he can taste one of those two energies. You know, he's sitting there in this place of, like, growth and power. And in particular, after having grown this first route, we start to experience a heartbeat-like mechanic, if you see off in the distance. That spike has remained unchanged where Nezarek is. And if we actually go forward, we will experience the main proper mechanic of it, which is, of course, the wipe that goes on here. It's just a little bit more of a sort of acknowledgement of the idea that, yes, Nezarek is kind of being regrown, rebuilt. and we'll constantly do that. Also, throughout the uh, grounds of the raid, here you can see how things have changed. So it's not perfectly clear because many of the different bits and pieces have started to change, but if you look over to where the uh, root is currently, you can actually see the remnants of what was first encounter and how now it's totally wrecked. I didn't even notice that. Uh. Oh, oh, speedrun strats. Ooh. Maybe don't speed run too we'll much because the there, yeah, yeah. there is dialogue, just as an FYI. Oh, my bad. 
Ah, that's all good. Don't worry about it. Oh, I'm so dead. Hmm? I'm. Someone do the uh, second thing. It's light. Call her if you can. Yeah. Uh, if I pass by, it, I'll go ahead and get it. So yeah, Nezarek here talks about how he died the first time. And talks about how it was Savathun that betrayed him, which means that she has been planning to betray the Witness for a very long time. Because yeah, this is another of the Witness's disciples here. Um, I think also it's really worth uh, remembering and at the very least pointing out that uh, throughout this entire exchange, Nezarek is talking about the Veil as well. Uh, and that matters, if only because of the fact that the Veil has been such a hot-button issue, but it shows us that the Witness, for a certain period of time, did possess it. You know, they they sat there and they had it on Nezarek's pyramid ship. If anybody gets the Raid Exotic at the end of this, you can read the Law tab, and that will actually tell you, in conditional finality, uh, about how Nezarek lost the Veil to Savathun, how it tore the Veil from his pyramid ship. And so, yeah, you have this really... I think what must have been an entirely frustrating moment for them, but yeah, it's it's a moment at which Savathun literally saved our entire species and saved everyone. A strange moment where it's like, hey, is she actually the good guy? Yeah, so by saving everyone, she also saves the hive, just like pretty much saves the universe by doing that? Potentially the hive. We're not sure if they would have died if the final shape had been enacted, but it does seem clear that Savathun was intent on... Um, yeah, intent on not letting the witness have its way. We can't exactly explain why either, because it's not given any clear indication as to why she had some kind of opposition to it uh, in the first place. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's not... I, I suppose I should rephrase that. There is no clear moment at which it shows that Savathun directly went from, you know, hey, I am a disciple, I follow the darkness, to maybe this isn't all it's hyped up to be, you know? There is no moment right. at which that's done. Uh, did... Anybody get the uh, second one for the red border? I forget. I did. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Could she not have done it for, like, selfish reasons? Because she needs to, like, do the sword logic stuff to get stronger now? Uh, entirely possible, but the sword logic is kind of a construct of darkness in itself. So it's a... Uh... Isn't she alive still? I don't remember how the, the Witch Queen campaign ended. Technically, yeah. she's dead, but she's not dead enough to uh, be considered out of the story, if that makes sense. So, she is dead, but her ghost Imaru is still alive, which means that there is a very uh. good chance that she gets resurrected at some point in the future. So, yeah. Big. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about this, by the way. Um, we're about to get Nezarek dialogue again, but... I open the chest here. Take a look at the... Uh... Yeah, take a look at the tree. Because uh, this is actually a good point to take a view of it, and you can take a view of First Encounter from here too, I believe. Yeah, you can see First Encounter oh, from sick. all the... Yeah, it's on its side, it's off kilter, it's been dislodged by roots that have grown. The tree has also grown. So yeah, you have a lot there. Make sure I don't die to that. There we go. That's awesome. Collect the loot. Apparently oh, yeah, there's a chest in here. Apparently, it just loves giving me shotguns today. I got your refugi. There we go. Oh crap! Whoop. There's a chest in here, by the way. Yeah, did oh. you uh, grab it over where Giggs is? Oh, oh no. That's okay. Take your time. You are all good. I didn't pick up this buff. Oh yeah. Okay. The the refugi. <laughs> refugi. <laughs> so yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Nezarek in a moment will give us a word about the warlords. I don't know if that got skipped because of speedrun strats, but either way, it's not the most significant bit of dialogue, but it does exist. Ah, oh, there it is. You're the warlords. We're so gonna die. Uh oh. <laughs> So back in the days, uh, yes and no. So basically, uh, the Warlords and Iron Lords are a kind of distinction from back in the Dark Age, right? So 
They're two distinct groups of early guardians before they were known as guardians, right? Because guardian is a term created by the city for its defenders. The actual uh, context of it is that everybody is a light bearer. That's the way that it really should be sort of like contextualized as, right? Because not everybody who wields the light is a guardian. I mean, case in point, the hive guardians, some people who don't associate as guardians of the city generally, like the drifter, you know. There are people like that throughout the entire story all over the place. Um, warlords were early light bearers who basically used their powers and the powers given to them by their ghosts for selfish means. So it would not be uncommon for a warlord to sit there and just claim this massive tract of land on Earth and then just rule over it like a king with an iron fist. You know, you would have people who... Uh, Saiten, for example. Saiten's an infamous warlord, not just because there's a titan exotic called Saiten's Ramparts, which is named after him, but also because, I mean, there was a point at which he was holding a feast and a banquet for himself, and uh, people on his land were kind of hungry and wanted food, uh, and he invited anybody to try and take things from his table, and uh, yeah, no, his ramparts did not fall, but the people very much did. So yeah, the whole thing is that Warlords were kind of brutal, Iron Lords were their counterpart, but not brutal in that sense. They were supposedly the ones who were on the good side of things, they were the precursors to Guardians. But Nezarek here is sort of sitting there and being like, hey, you guys as Warlords did amazing things in the name of cruelty, I loved that. You know? <laughs> because again, this is what Nezarek enjoys. He feeds off of pain and terror. And it is very much his jam to go ahead and make sure that he does that. As long as there is pain and terror in the world, he keeps feeding. Even in the state where he is dead. Because remember, by the time of the Warlords, he is dead. Like, he no longer exists. And he will have been inside his tomb on the pyramid ship on Luna, or he would have been in this pyramid spike, depending on the time and place. But regardless... Even when he's dead, he's not too dead to dream of being gifted all the uh, the benefits of, well, yeah, everybody's pain and suffering. Because, yeah, that is entirely what he feeds off of. There's like a line of dialogue in here. I don't know if I just missed it, but he says, like, I will kill two or three people. Yes. So to show my might. But like, that just seems so small because like didn't Rourke like kill, like literally destroy his own planet, like committed a genocide on his own people. See, here's the thing. That's to expedite us coming along, and that's a commentary on where his power is at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. The Nezarek, it's really not about the killing, though. It's more about the act of terror, the act of pain. You know, mm. if he could keep people in perpetual agony and not kill them, I think he would choose to do that. You know, like, okay. killing is a more direct signal. Mm -hmm. The uh, This is the way of making sure that we Guardians could come here and do what we do, because we love unanswered mysteries, and Nezarek seems pretty clear that, you know, we'll actually help grow this tree of silver wings and therefore grow him a new body. His entire ploy here seems to be just, hey, you know, help me make this new body so I can get back out there into the world. Alright. Speaking of out Makes there sense. into the world, this is... Uh, this is probably the most fun encounter with see, regards to it all. I see what all. you did there. Welcome. This is the best encounter. Yeah. Welcome to the macrocosm. Can I grab a CP, maybe? Uh, I can do it real quick. Yeah. I think Meg's just went AFK. That's all good. Yeah. We can take our time. But yeah. Uh, macrocosm. Hi. You may remember this place. If you remember the end of Witch Queen and the final cutscene that featured the Witness, you will remember this walk towards this gallery of planets, and this place is very important for a few reasons. So, first of all, back in the Witch Queen, there were the Altar of Reflection uh, things that you could complete, and Savathun would sometimes give you a note where she would say, let me give you two truths and two lies. The rather infamous one that has been relayed for this place in particular, the macrocosm with all these planets, went something along the lines of two truths, two lies, the Taken King will rise again, I shepherd it away, Titan, Io, and uh, Mercury to keep them safe. Uh, it was I who returned to Mars, and the power to move planets will soon be yours. I think those are the correct four. I know that the power to move planets and the Taken King rising again one 
are two of those potential options. But the point is, two of those are lies and two of those are truths. This, the ability to move planets, is undistinguishable at this point from what Savathun is saying. You know, this is clearly something that the Witness has not only demonstrated as a power, but now we can see how they do it and the process by which it all functions. I would be astounded if we don't come back to this room at some point in the future of the story, because it has huge implications. This looks like where we move planets, and whilst right now they are showing as light and dark and green in the middle, the three orbs in the middle are actually representative of the three other planets that got stolen at the end of Season of Arrivals. In the middle there, if I'm not mistaken, because of its green and pockmarked surface, is Io. And then on the left and right, respectively, would be Mercury and Titan. I can't remember which is which because they're currently highlighted as the light and dark orbs, but this is the mechanism by which the Witness moves things. It's also worth noting that if you wipe on this encounter to the time running out, you know, it conjoins the planets with versions of them that are opposites. And uh, yeah, the debuff you die to is called Planetary Destruction. <laughs> so uh, moving planets might not be the only thing this place can do, which is what's even more terrifying. But yeah, no, it's uh, as well as being like the most aesthetically beautiful encounter in the entire game. It's also probably one of the coolest, you know, like nothing wrong with sitting there and having something which just looks completely ridiculously badass but man do they really play it up for this one yeah it's a uh did that did that answer your question disco hopefully it did <laughs> i don't even remember why i asked <laughs> well, okay i think well i know you were asking me like are these the actual planets like oh, literally yeah, yeah. yeah are they I guess uh, they're like a representation of them, but are they the other two formats? As best we know, they are, because in the middle you have, uh... Yeah, in the middle there you have Io, on the left is Mercury. And on the right, as I die to all of these things eventually, slowly... No, never mind, I'm gonna live because I'm strafing, it's fine. Uh, yeah, you've got Titan. Right. But yeah, no, these are all representations of planets. The three in the middle are the ones that we lost. Aside from Mars, which of course has returned. The ones all around on the periphery... I don't think our specific planets from our solar system, even though there are planets from our solar system that appear throughout the entire thing. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's kind of a collection of yes, it is and yes, it isn't as far as different planets and moons are concerned. That's so cool. Yeah, I think also it's important that they're not for the sake of the fact that the six on the left and the six on the right are just, you know, based around encounter things and everything else is just whatever. Not that it particularly matters, by the way, but is there a DPS strat of preference for this one? Uh, Shoot the dude. Shoot rockets. the boy. Yeah, rockets. I mean, whatever you want to use, really. Cool. All right. Not to worry, then. Ah, there we go. Uh, are we wiping for CP? Yes, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm joining back right now. Um, how do we want to do this? Hmm. Uh, two sets, one use words, one use text chat. Use look at where the other person is. Like a top team and a, and a bottom team. Yeah. Just look whatever planet yeah. they're standing on. That's really hard. <laughs> your, your eyes don't work, bro? I don't have eyes. No. You guys don't have eyes? I it's don't crazy. have eyes. Damn. No. That's why you haven't got a world's first offer. Oof. After, after what? After what? <laughs> after me, bro. <laughs> mm. Hey. Mm. Okay. Switch out one or two things, mm. but yeah, basically ready. Last wish emblem check. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Gally. open up the stream and watch the strat check. I won't lie. I'm gonna kind of be with gigs on this one. The uh, Lost Wish emblem is, uh, I think, personally more <laughs> impressive. I'm sorry, I gotta see it how I see it. <laughs> Let's go. Look, man. Okay. Look, I'm proud that I'm one of the thousand people with Riven jackets. I wouldn't even know what it's like being one of the 11 people in the world who has the freaking Lost <laughs> Wish emblem. I sold that code for a thousand dollars. Whoa, whoa, whoa! TOS. I'm reporting Damn you. Me, I'm, re I'm reporting you for your world first comment. Damn me, bro. Damn. <laughs> um, all right, we need. It's like four people doing 
Mechanics to do an ad clear. Uh, I can do mechanics. Uh, yeah, I'll take bottom right hand thing if that's all right. I can okay. do top right. I'll do top left. And then someone want to do bottom left? Yeah. Ballers, I don't know what I'm... to do, but I would Shoot if the I things. could. Uh, I think, I think, I think we're doing disco and Megs on ad clear. You just kind of chill middle and then like shoot stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you see Colossus's mate, uh, don't kill him. Yes, okay. that's the important part to it. I totally have no ammo, but it's I. I'll make you ammo. Please. Okay. Uh. Over on light, it is the furthest one from the center, on the bottom. I don't know which is one, two, three for I'm you. Which one's you? Yeah. Which one's yours? I, I thought you had eyes, man. I didn't see where you were standing. I wasn't. It's like close, close, close left. That one. The top one. Oh, the one. What, turn the one I'm heading to right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. Can't move the planet. Easy peasy. I have planetary ship, but I can't. No, planetary shift is just the timer. Yeah, I, just, I couldn't plan. I think because you. What? You get the planetary insight. Please. Planetary insight lets you see the bad boys, right? I don't know if it's what lets you pick it up. Do we do it? I mean, I think we need one more. I don't know. Still. Oh, I'm. I forgot. I step. Stupid. I just need to finish top. Yeah. yeah. It was the bottom one. I, I, I didn't kill a thing, so I don't this see one, it. This one, baller? Yeah, it's four, that one. But you, you want to stay side thing. once you, once you rotate? We're going to have to kill another set. All right, we have planetary shift right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I think because we didn't finish, like, lock the side or whatever. I right. forgot you have to grab the planet and bring it over. Ah. Uh, just grab it. I mean, hey, we should hopefully have enough time for another. Yeah, yeah. For those of you who didn't notice, by the way, you can see along the floor there's the uh, yellow line. Again, it's right. the same symbol, and again, it is our white timer. Oh, yeah. uh, you, you haven't moved four yet. <laughs> you grab the planet. We both have to do it again. Yeah, to we both. You did it two gigs? Yeah. That looks I like it. We have the time now, but maybe if we slay out. Yeah, we'll right. see. We just gotta kill the uh, Centurion uh, in the center really quickly to spawn the Colossi as fast as possible. There it is. They're dead. Okay, so we are looking at... I'm throwing. Darkness in middle and right. Light is left. Yes, I think that's sure. Ah! Yes, it is. So here's that planetary destruction bit. You have a dark... <laughs> you have dark planets and light <laughs> no, planets it's joining. For more purposes. It's fine. It's fine. See, in the top right there, planetary destruction. Oh, no. I can take it. See, there is a purpose to this. <laughs> that was just karma for the world first comment. <laughs> Listen, I haven't done this in a while. Right? I think I've done like four of these. <laughs> That's more than me. All right. Now I can have ammo. I forgot you have to grab the planet and actually like bring it over. <laughs> we wiped yep. I just walked. Rally. I just walked over. And I was like, "What's going on?" Yeah, guys, we just wiped for ammo. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, uh, I believe by your call-outs it's three, uh, Bola, on this side. 
two. Pick it up. Uh, it's two closer two. to the wall or the yeah. spawn? Yeah. Cool, gotcha. Close to the outside wall. That is all I need to know. Thank yeah. you. Right. And as you can see, of course, the planets are shifting into place. Which is probably the coolest little bit of the uh, encounter. Possibly of the entire raid. Agreed. Power to move planets is indeed ours. Uh, one dark on the left side. I'll okay. get it. I'll get light right. Yes. All right, I'm just going to clear out some ads. Uh, mid left right? Yeah, sure. So we're going to go to damage. Uh, we'll have to step on this middle plate, and then we'll be able to damage the boss. And then we'll go to the left plate, and then the right plate. Okay, you just need to get the buff. You don't need to stay on the plate, so. Indeed. See, so not dark. What? <laughs> Left. You can go back to middle for the wall. Now just do that again. Reasonable damage. Nice, easy breezy two phase. Lunar. What's yours? Uh, four, I think this was. That's, no, that's five. Uh, mine is two. Hola. One. Got it. They're just dropping the same one you picked up all the way in the back. Ooh. Nice by ammo. There we go. See if I can grab a darkness for right. I'll do darkness middle. Right, middle, left, right? Or is it middle, right, left? Middle left, right? Middle left, right. How can you uh, tell the order? I like flip flops. Uh, so there's two. So let's say dark and a, two dark and a light. Let's turn dark light dark. Ah, so it always alternates. Cool. Good to know. I'm already immune. What? Yeah. yeah it's, oh, final stand. Fun fact, when he enrages, it's actually just a one minute long DPS. Yeah, I'm um, back and I go grab water when he does this. No, it's only a minute. The final stand is a minute, yeah. Remember really? Well? Yeah. A minute? Wow. Okay. Had no clue it was that generous. And, and even, like, if you mess up and enrage him, it just goes to the final stand immediately, so it gives you, like, a minute. So it kind of, like, rewards you for messing up. 
Uh, the best way to do it might be to just trigger fire this time. <coughs> just make it. Corexus is distress. There we go. Oh, actually. Is this going to be a good roll? That's an okay roll. Envious Assassin and Paracausal Affinity. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's not terrible. On which gun? Uh, the nade launcher. Oh, sick. Yeah. It is certainly not the one I'd craft, but for the moment, I'll take that. Oh cool. yeah. Okay, so this is uh, post encounter three is the moment where we grow the tree for a second time. You will remember if you looked at it outside that it was sort of starting to bloom previously. And here is we get what I think is probably the most fantastic song in the entire raid and some of the coolest atmosphere in all of Lightfall as we grow this tree again with a little bit of darkness and a little bit of light. We end up yet again having a moment where the tree grows, the raid changes, and suddenly you start to see the influence of Nezarek expand once again. Because again, whilst the tree grows, so does he. Also again, I don't know if people play with music on, but for those of you who do have it off, just throughout anyone who's listening on stream as well, just for this moment alone, it's kind of like a uh, tiny version of Deep Stone Lullaby. It's very worth having it. Yeah, I just turned mine on to listen whenever you mentioned it. It's sick. I love it when Destiny sits there and is okay with making these uh, beautiful little moments in the game. Reminds everybody that it's uh, not always so serious and doesn't need to be. I've totally run out of time on that, but it's fine. I can just go from the second field. Is there, like, legit just holes? There is. Where is Baller? I think you through the butthole. You got through the butthole? <laughs> yeah, there's, like, holes all over. There's one here, but I can't fit through it. Oh my god, can you actually pull a vow and it's just, just oob out of it? Yeah. yeah, you can squeeze through it. Uh, <laughs> maybe you can sort through? Yeah, you can sort through. Oh, Jisco got through. Wow. What the heck? <laughs> Cheaters! There's a whole... Dang. Right, don't go too far ahead. Yeah, don't go yeah. too far ahead. Just in case it does proc dialogue. That's uh, probably not what we want to do. I don't know what was going on that time. I didn't even shoot it. I think... I don't know. Did we both? I don't know. No clue. I think we're missing darkness? Yes, we are. Light? Hold on one sec. Okay, starting again. There we go. There we go. Now we just do it and take it to the center. There we are. Also, I appreciate that on the first one, darkness is bottom, light top, and then vice versa here. Yep. Notice as well the. the side of it's all dark. Yeah. The uh, when it grows that second time, it's all resonant energy too. It's resonant darkness and whatnot, which. If you remember the first time between second and third encounter, it was actually not that. It was all light energy. So mm -hmm. again, it's this idea of the tree is growing, but we're using both light and dark to do it. Which tells us a lot of interesting, scary things, potentially, about what's going on in this raid. Also, I never noticed the floor is moving. Yeah, it's kind of trippy. <laughs> Where is lava? <laughs> So yeah, one last time, you can take a look out and you will notice yet again that there is something which has not moved, which is the key, the spike going through Nezarek, still pointing at the gateway to the Traveler's portal. It's still there, and in all of these different root structures, you'll notice that everything else has changed. Including, when you look outwards to your right, the Tree of Silver Wings, which is now fully and properly bloomed thanks to our nurturing. So, you have not only a new Tree of Silver Wings, this vessel of light in the middle of a massive pyramid ship, but you also have a new God of Pain that has now been fully regrown. He is no longer just the head and the torso. You know what he looks like at Final Stand. You know what he is as the final boss. He is now properly fully regrown, and he is regrown with both darkness and light. 
So yeah, scary stuff that we have to face as far as the narrative is concerned. But we also need to actually get there. So that's more charting our way through all the pyramid nonsense. Is this key growing? You mean the... Like uh, tor towards the, the travel SE? So this is the interesting thing. This The key, as uh, uh, it's been put, does not change. It remains consistent throughout the entire raid, through first encounter all the way to fourth. Hmm. As best we know, it, well, it's not so much they don't affect it, and this is a, I want to put it out here that this is theory, this is not at all confirmed, so very much keep that in mind, but I think that there was a purpose to that thing being there and to it specifically not changing. So, uh, long story short, I think that the reason that it is pointing at the gateway is because the Traveler has deliberately planted the Tree of Silver Wings with the intent of pointing it there. I think that the key thing we keep going on about is a lot more literal than people realize. I think this is actually how we follow the Witness, and that the Traveler has been setting up the gate for us to follow through this whole time. Because remember, when the beam that the Traveler shot at this ship actually hit it, the Witness, totally unfazed, didn't care, just went ahead and floated straight through the middle of the beam, literally unaffected. The ship was what was affected. Which tells me that the Traveler's gesture might not have been as futile as people think. It may be the last gift the Traveler gave us before it was consumed or died or whatever you have. And it may be the case that that gift is letting us follow onwards and allows us to follow to wherever we end up going with all of the stuff where we're inevitably going to follow the Witness. You know, this might be our way in. All I'd say is that as the seasons of the year progress forward, watch this space. I do not believe for even a second that we're done with this raid and with its environment. In fact, I think that we're going to return here not once, but maybe twice. Also, for those, sick. Yeah, for those who don't know, by the way, there is a lore thing vaguely where I'm standing. Can't remember where all the others are, but I know that that one is very much there. Uh, oh, I think I have that one. For a very long time. Ah, and there's Nezarek again. So yeah, Nezarek's new perspective here, of course, is not just the fact that he's rebuilt a body for himself, but also it's a body made of light. It is entirely something that has allowed him to fester back into the world, and that will change everything if he's allowed to go forward without being killed. But that is kind of why we're here, so we're going to go ahead and kill him. <laughs> and we can also jump down here to get the last of the things, but I think Luna's already got it. There we go. Okay, so you want to know something crazy, by the way? Yeah. Uh, if you take a look around at these different pyramid complexes, uh, some bits and pieces will definitely be recognizable to you. Uh, if you continue to look at them, you will start to realize that, hey, these are sections of jumping puzzle and platform that we may have moved through before. It is hard to confirm with each one because lots of them are all so broken up. But wherever it's possible, look around for the distinct bits of geometry and everything that looks familiar to you. If there is a somewhat completed bit and piece to it, it's possible that you've seen it before and that it's just been completely broken up by the roots here. And again, it's that beautiful little thing. There has been growth here. It has been new life. That's and big. The entire raid, all about growth, all about light and dark twisting together. And the way that it expresses itself ultimately comes to a head here in this final moment where we return to Nezarek for final encounter. And yet again, you can tell ultimately that this is the same place as it was before because not only is that spike there, not only is the key still there, but also there is the symbol underneath the blue outline which has got Nezarek's symbol with the two horns, much like on Nezarek's sin. That was there in the first encounter underneath the pyramid spike as well. It is also still here in this final part of the raid. The only difference now is that the entire area has been overtaken with this mixture of light and dark. So yeah, you are looking at something which is 
totally ridiculous as far as the implications are concerned. But like, yeah, the growth that you can literally see in the raid and experience as you go through it, it's kind of remarkable. Anyway, I am going to pull out a Thunderlord and get ready for DPS. I will have galley for anyone running rockets. Sick. And then... Uh, I have tether. tether. Yeah, I have tether and aid. And then we'll just DPS from the middle right platform here. Nice. All right. Uh, baller disco, you guys, or lunar, or who's running? I can run. I can do whatever. Okay, will... yeah, you two run. I will be so glad to not run for once. <laughs> Do you want to run lunar over left? Uh, it doesn't matter. You can do it then. Bet. Are we just speed running? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Who's, who's, oh wait, we gotta walk up to the guy, right? Yes. Last little bits of dialogue for your stream gigs. <laughs> yes. So yeah, Nezarek sitting there and saying, let me devour your fear, is a very literal call to what he does. He is the final god of pain, the Eater of hatred. Terror. <laughs> yeah, it's dark. Disco, do you want to explain Ron and Robert? We can do it after. <laughs> oh god. Also, it might take a while, a very deep lore. I realize I didn't actually ask which side I should be on, so I'm just going to slay ads out and just do the thing. A lot of ads on the right side. Noted on my way. Really not fun. Probably. Oh, he Where'd was dark. Where'd you put it? It's dark. Yeah, dark. Uh, oh, are we all dying? Yeah, we're all dying. Yeah, we're not dead. Like, like the world. When you said speed running, I thought we were ignoring refuge. That was the damn thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 there was just so many ads, I just walked through and died. Damn. I'll go right side with litter. Just kill all the dudes. Uh, I will also go right side then, because I do. I will also go right side. Yes. <laughs> Good luck, Buller. <laughs> no worries, I got this. He's a big, chunky titan. I was just standing in the middle. <laughs> you guys stay safe over there, it's a dangerous place. <laughs> World is a dangerous place, take this. Do we have a div? I, I do not have. Okay, we do have a div. We do. Ready? Okay, cool. Three, two, one. Light for a future if we need it. Let's go. Ooh, got one more. Well, so we're gonna damage on me here soon. Gotcha. Arc on. Super quickly before we do end up in damage phase. The scythe he wields is called Night Terror. Those of you who don't know, that's very much related. Is back there? I guess so. It's called what? It's called Night Terror. And for those who don't know, Night Terrors are related to very bad oh. nightmares. Somehow I... I named Night Terror. I'm not gonna lie, I, it's slightly tragic that you can't pick up one for yourself, you know? That would've been sick. Like, if they let us wield Lubre's Ruin, I would have loved a glaive called Night Terror. That would have been, oh, chef's kiss. Almost one phase. Damn. No one phase. I so should have used my rockets. I was DPSing with Rufus's Fury. Damn. Yeah. Awesome. On this one, or? Nah. 
Okay. If you two are fast <laughs> enough. I don't have a. Well, I'm not using. Yeah, I'm not using. Oh, what's his face? Edge. Light. It's light if we need it. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll do it. I'm gonna just drop the plate now. Actually, should I or wait? I'm gonna go for it. It doesn't really matter. I think it stays the whole length of the time. Uh, the buff is on this plate on me. Do you want to survive? He's a little wipe. He slammed the pit. Make sure you have lights refugi on your screen. Yep, here comes the white mechanic. I have one with the white refugee. Replenish it just in case. Alright, we're good. Should shoot him before we start damage. I think I reset. He's looking at Baller. You shoot his chest, Baller? Nope. Trying to get the I got last, it. Trying to get the last fight one. Oh, I'm fucking deep there. I'll be out. Just have one more dark in the CPS. There's a lot of ads though. Do the last dark now. DPS. So I'm on disco if you want it. It's DPS already. Is it DPS? Ooh, do note by yeah, the way. Oh, wait. he has a shoulder. A shoulder. No, 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 it doesn't no, matter. GPS. He's gotta wait. Yeah. Under normal circumstances, whenever DPS does happen, a beam of light and a beam of darkness shoot out from the spike, by the way. Worth noting, because it's a little bit like both powers are rejecting Nezarek. Because ultimately, there's only one force that can wield both in this world, it seems, and that is us. Wait, we're the only ones? We're we, the bad guys, right? We're the only ones that can wield both, at least successfully, by the looks of things. So, Nezarek has just died in front of us and yet can still speak. That... Ooh, I got the Bundusi. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that matters, and the reason why that matters is because Nezarek has proven to us through all the lore that even in death, he isn't really dead. He is not gone. The problem with that is that it seems as though us having looked upon the face of Nezarek and us having had close contact means that he will continue to haunt us. That is a big problem in itself. You have these people, the acolytes of Nezarek, who all the raid guns are named after. People such as Rufus and Caraxis and Briar and Michael and Nessa. All of these individuals have had some kind of contact with Nezarek, and that contact has almost universally been disastrous for their lives. However, they have still continued on with his way of being. They have worshipped him. They have continued his cult. And there's no mistaking why that is. It's because of the powerful grip that fear has over them and that Nezarek generally holds. When you sit there and actually look at Nezarek's influence, the fear is so utterly complete and so totally terrifying that it is almost intoxicating. If you actually look through and read the raid lore on the armor, you can find out more about three of the disciples, or at least sorry, not Disciples, Acolytes, three of the individuals who are related to Nezarek in this way. There is a Cassia, a Scion, who one of the Acolytes finds, and they talk about how Nezarek was worshipped in the Scion cultures, and how they did all sorts of awful things, like sacrificing individuals to said god of pain, Nezarek. You then also have people who are sitting there as just guardians who've been affected by this before. That's Briar, who's in the Titan lore. You then have other people, such as Caraxis, an Elixni pirate, who looked upon Nezarek's face themselves and was in a place where they were troubled by it. Troubled so much that they couldn't sleep for a very long time. 
Nezarek has a lasting influence, and I think it would be stupid of us to simply say that Nezarek is truly dead. In fact, I would expect them to be a reoccurring face in the future of Destiny if ever things become troubling. They are a villain that's now stashed in the back lore of Destiny, and I don't think that they're going to go away at any point soon. I think they're going to be there at some point in the future to greet us whenever they come back, and whenever we hear about nightmares again. So just keep that in mind. If ever you see something about nightmares, think about Nezarek. He is there, still waiting. He's been killed twice now, but I don't think he's too dead to dream, as the saying goes. So yeah. That's sick. So like Tanix, you're going to fight him ten Kind times? of like Tanix, yeah. He's, uh, he is like Tanix, except, I mean, you know, he's Tanix kind too. of rooming at the witness's house. That's kind of it. I do. So this, this thing that's being pierced, it, was it like a, was this just like his like coffin? Kind of, yeah. I mean, this is where his remains were held. It was only the helmet, but that's where he was. And that was what was pierced and therefore allowed him to regrow from just ahead as best we know. That's sick. Uh, also, I'm going to point it out again because this is the best perspective of it that you'll get. Uh, the roots have not particularly grown, but the key is still pointing in the same direction. You can actually see it if you walk over here. It is actually pointing directly into the portal. So yeah, for those of you who are wondering, that is kind of an interesting thing that may or may not have been done deliberately that we just don't know about yet. So yeah, it is worth pointing out. It is definitely intentional, I think. Indeed. It's extremely striking. Like the white against the black. Mm-hmm. Also striking because whenever we've seen one of those before, uh, one of the key-like structures on the end, it's been made of dark resonant pyramid material, and this one's made of light. You know, like this is very different, and I think that that's entirely deliberate. Um, yeah. If there are any more questions, now is the time. You could open it up to chat, or you could just have from the people in the raid team if you want. I'm fine with either. We have a little bit of time if you want it. Can you explain Robert? You, I think you can explain Ron and Robert better than me. <laughs> this, this is deep lore. This is up for 30 hours lore. Tell me of the deep lore of Robert. So, you know whenever he's like chilling and just like lagging out? Standing beside the plate during damage. Uh huh. Well, that's Rob. He's got two personalities. And then Robert <laughs> is whenever he starts surfing the plate. Ah. Everything bad is Robert. Everything good <laughs> <Yeah>. is Ron. <laughs> Depends oh. who has control. Most um, excellent. I think there was a question about like how uh, the traveler picks who it resurrects, or did you already answer that? Uh, no, I don't believe I did, but as best I can tell, uh, we don't actually have a decent guide on who the Traveler picks and why they pick them, even less so after Witch Queen, because, I mean, Witch Queen made us realize the Traveler was choosing Hive Guardians, so, yeah, uh, problems with that one for certain, but yeah, we have no concrete answer to that question. It's one of the greater mysteries of Destiny that maybe we'll see answered in final shape, because it's hopefully going to be when we'll get a lot of big answers to things, but we'll see. Hello. Hi, Chad. Any questions? Feel free to ask now. I'll take How a... accurate is the prophecy wall after Lightfall in the raid? I mean, I think it might be completely accurate. We don't know what the witness did or where it went. It may also be that the prophecy wall is based on Rulk's uh, interpretation of things, so it's not entirely clear, but for the most part, it seems as though it's come to pass, you know? If the Witness did enter the Traveler or commune with the Traveler and drink the light, that is most certainly going to be uh, a reference and an indication that that prophecy wall was accurate. Someone asked, why did the disciples die with the roots growing out of their body? This is a great question. Uh, there is a ton of theory to do with mushrooms out there in all of this, hilariously enough. Um, as best I know, this is just the influence of darkness that has been pumped into them. Uh, you actually have some lore from back in Vow of the Disciple. There is a sparrow containing this dark liquid that at one point uh, crashes on a guardian sparrow, the guardian themselves, 
gets kind of infected by this thing, and instead of letting it fully infect them, they blow up their sparrow, literally nuking it, because they don't want to let this thing get out. As best we can tell, that's what's going on. However, more videos for context for it, for those who do want to investigate. I know that Mylin has a video where he goes into his theories and ideas on this, and references stuff that's going on there. I'd also take a look at Maximizing Destiny, because they have videos on things to do with fungi in Destiny, and what may be going on there. It may be the case that everything that's going on is connected, kind of like the roots of a fungus and mycelium. So those are some things that I would uh, look into if you're interested in learning more about that. Okay. Toes wants to know, can he relate radial mass to the key? Relate the two? As in, are they similar? I, I think that's what he means. I mean, I would think maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think that there is potentially a uh, a connection there. And the reason being is because the witness was using the radial mast, which was an object of light, to connect to the, uh, to the veil. We don't know whether that is actually a object of light or dark, the veil this is, but it is one of those things where it seems to indicate that it very much is a thing of darkness, but may have some properties of light to it as well. If that is the case, then maybe the witness needs to emulate properties of light as a being of darkness in order to link to it properly. This is kind of the theory that I posed in a video I did on the Veil only a few days ago. Um, it may also be the reason why when it did finally link with the Veil, it linked using our ghost. You know, it's a creature of light, and the witness is a creature of darkness, thus allowing access. Again, though, we don't know much about the Veil. Uh, there is scant little we have beyond theory, so... We'll need to wait until Bungie, you know, tells us a little bit more about that. I think Love you, that. you might be able to relate it, especially if it lets us pass through the gateway and actually get to wherever the witness went to. What do you think's inside the traveler? Oh man, that's a that's a great question. Um We know Fenchurch has been inside, <laughs> according to all of his rumors. As for what I think's in there, dunno. Could be some kind of primordial uh, essence of what's known as the Gardener. We know that the Traveler has powers of terraforming, and we know that the Gardener, which is a figure from some of the creation mythology of Destiny, has similar powers to that. It's very much the case that when we do find out, that will be probably at the apex of Final Shape. It'll probably be one of the most important questions that we have to answer of the entire thing. I would sit there and I would expect everything to revolve around one of those central questions. But yeah, there so is no is definitive the answer. Is Traveler like a tool of the Gardener? We don't know what the true relationship is. It could be a tool of the Gardener, it could be the Gardener itself, it could be something that has been related to the Gardener and is similar to the Witness in the sense that the Witness is not truly the Darkness. Yeah, we're not entirely sure. It could be that this massive beef between the Witness and the Traveler is just the Witness and the Traveler having beef, and the Light and Dark themselves exist relatively harmoniously. They're just two forces that have been weaponized by these two sides. It's not clear. Alright. So, um, so, someone followed up with, so is the Traveler full of fertilizer? <laughs> <laughs> full of fertilizer. <laughs> I mean... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. You, uh, you gotta ask me about farming things when I've learned about farming things. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Gardening things good, Connor. I mean, hey, you know, it had to grow the tree somehow, and I mean, you know, what other way is there to grow things other than blasting it with a ton of light and fertilizer, right? That's totally <laughs> how it's done. That's how we garden. All you just need is a little bit of water, and boom, you're good. Um, so what is the veil? Ah. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a massive 42 minute or something video on that, but at current we do not know much. The things that we absolutely do know is that the veil reveals Strand around it, and it seems to be the source of Strand. There is potential indications that the veil is an artifact of darkness, but also potentially has properties of the light. The idea as well is that the Veil is what's been used to power the Cloud Arc, and that it is more of an organic system than a digital one. This is 
from dialogue you can find from the citizens of Neomuna in their digital forms. You can also tell thanks to, and this last bit is not necessarily canon, but there's a Bungie tweet from the uh, person who made the original concept art of the Veil. I'm probably going to butcher their name, but it's Dima Gorianov, I think? They basically stated that the original concept behind the Veil was as a massive um, source of cosmic power and as a source of memory, or oh, sorry, of the memory of the entirety of uh, the universe. And if that is yeah. true, that's, I mean, there's huge implications from that, and we're not entirely sure where that takes us, but there's all sorts of reasons why the Witness might want that. However, that last bit isn't confirmed anywhere in game, it's just a Bungie employee talking about what the design philosophy and, you know, the description of it was. So it could be that that's not passed into game, it could be that that's just where the inspiration of it came from. You know, they could have sat there and said, make mm. something that looks like this. And that might be what it is mm. in game, and it might not be. But yeah. Oh, okay. The Veil is something we'll need to wait until Season of the Deep for when they drop that big quest. And they talk about like, hey, this is, uh, this is what's actually going on with the Veil itself. This is what Osiris has learned. Yeah. For the moment, though, right. big source of Strand. We can tell that much. So in the story, like even like currently our guardians, the characters within the game don't even know what it is. As best we know, they have no clue. Okay. Uh, someone wanted to know if the garden was a battleground, the red flowers and roots all through the place indicate the traveler uses terraform blast on there. Uh, when they say the garden, do they, I think I, they mean the black garden? I mean... I'd say no, because it's one of those things where we... Okay, let me let me re-clarify that, because there's two potential kinds of gardens here, right? There's the... Oh, Garden of Salvation. Yes, Black Garden. Okay, there, cool. That actually helps clarify it. Um, honestly, I think that the answer there is kind of not really. I think that when you look at the Black Garden, the influence is clearly of the Vex, but also it's such a primordial and mysterious place that has... A lot of influence of light and growth, excessive growth in that manner, but also has been corrupted a lot by darkness. So it's really hard to tell where everything goes. I wouldn't say that it's been directly blasted by the Traveler or anything, because in that instance, the roots are completely out of control. There's a tree of silver wings to show for it. There's a lot going on there, but I don't believe for a second that you're looking at something which allows you to sit there and say like, hey, this is somewhere where definitively there has been a battleground. You know, aside from anything else, the Vex of the Black Garden, the Sol Divisive, make a big point of being the ones that tend to the roots of the garden and sort of keep it the way it is. So, you know, you're looking at something there which is, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, how do I best put it? It's kind of like if there was a battle here, it wasn't something that necessarily involved the primordial forces of the darkness and light from, say, the Traveler and the Witness. I would say, however, that it's so old, we just don't know. You know, the Garden is a place outside of time. It doesn't exist by the same rules and logic that everything else does. So when I say any of that, take everything with a pinch of salt because no one can truly know. You know, my musings in this moment don't necessarily give you an answer because I don't think anybody can. All right. Uh... Someone wanted to know, what is the biggest question lore-wise that you personally want answered? Oh gosh, uh, I know everybody's going on about the Veil, but I want to know where the Witness went. You know, the Veil has little bits and pieces questions here and there about like, you know, what's going on with it, but we have no clue where the Witness is. Nobody knows where the Witness has gone. At this current point in time, if we could just get the answer to that one question, I think it would start to lay the foundation to where everything is going a lot better. And I think that that's important because the narrative over this next year has really got to crack it, you know? Like, it's got to be really on point. But, you know, outside of anything to do with, like, perspective of the game and outside of things personally, yeah, I feel like I'd want to know what the relationship is between Witness, Traveler, Gardener, Winnower. You know, how much of the legend involves these figures? Where did all of these different bits and pieces come into the equation? What's true and what's not, you know? There's a lot to do with the old mythology that we just don't truly understand. It's all allegory and superstition and lifting the veil on that, pun somewhat intended. 
you know, that I think is very important. Getting answers to that will matter. How do you think the game ends? Uh, I don't, well, for one, the game's not going to end because Bungie's confirmed that they've continued to do it. But I think the saga ends with us, Guardians, being the final shape. We can wield darkness and we can wield light. And I think that the combination of the two is the final shape. We are the ones who get to make the ultimate decisions about what happens in the universe. We are the arbiters of the universe. That's how I think it ends. We take our place Architects as the rightful Architects of the ones. universe, if you will. Uh, guardians of the universe, perhaps. But the point is, we take our place in that moment where we get to say we have mastered both. We understand the world within and the world without. Darkness and light. Hypothetically, if this 10-year storyline is the biggest, baddest man in the whole for, uh, forever is the witness and we just we slay him out in a raid, then is there just some other big bad man who's been watching the whole time? <laughs> who just comes out of nowhere? Like, what could they possibly do? Zivor Rath and the uh, reclamation of Toro Bartle. Uh, off the top of my head, you're looking at the potential for Nezarek's continued resurrection. You look at the idea that Marasov still has an Ahamkara egg there and dragons could return. You could look at something like, say, Fikral, the fanatic, and the fact that the Scorn still don't truly have a place in Destiny's universe. There are tons of story beats throughout Destiny's entire narrative that have been built over 10 years that clearly won't get answered in the final shape and they can lead us off to different places. I mean, you know, maybe they come up in the Season of the Deep, but there are three worm gods out there that we've never encountered, as best we know. We've never seen Yul or Aya or Ur. We're sitting there on these massive characters that still have clear input for the story, but we just don't know where they've gone. We still don't know truly enough about the Nine to make major decisions about what goes forward with them. And yeah, there's still an entire universe out there with threats that could be introduced. And even if we do kill the Witness, who's to say we've killed all of its disciples? The Witness may be the be-all, end-all threat, but to say that the world doesn't go on, I mean, that's not how things work. You can end up killing the final boss, you can do all of that nonsense, but the world still persists and progresses. It is still very much a part of a living, breathing ecosystem. I think that's what they'll try and do. They'll try and push us to new places and to say like, hey, you've saved your solar system. Expand your horizons. Go somewhere else in the galaxy. That's where I think we'd go next. Sick. You think there's other travelers? That's a great question. I don't know. I, I, I hear so many rumors about second travelers and other travelers. If there are, I'd be really interested to see why the witness has been chasing this one specifically. For the moment, uh, I think not, though. What if he murdered all the other ones? No, this is the last one. Ooh, damn. Yeah, that, that would be kind of awesome. If the witness had murdered every single other traveler, that would be quite the compelling reason for the traveler to run, you know? I can imagine that being like a cutscene, some kind of explanation that comes from the Traveler itself. Ah, that would be awesome. It is called THE Traveler, not A Traveler. Indeed. Was there like a baby Traveler or was he just massive always? It didn't name it, so we named it right, so we could just <laughs> have named it with like no context to the other ones. True, we named it the Traveler and the Elixney named it the Great Machine, so it's entirely possible that our naming convention here is wrong for putting it in a singular, but who knows? As for whether it's... It, yeah, there was no Baby Traveler as best I know, it's always been that size. <laughs> oh yeah, who gives the witness his name? Do we know? Well, he's, it's a machine, right? T like technically? Or the witness? A living thing? No, so, the witness. The Traveler. Oh, sorry. What did he witness? Why do we call him the witness? I mean, that's just the title. As far as Savathun tells us, though, it's a an individual or a force with many names. So the Witness is just our particular moniker for this individual. Oh, okay. But yeah, sorry, someone was saying something about the machine? Well, I was saying, is, it, is, he, is the Traveler a machine or is it an organism? That's a very good question. Like, was it created or was it like... Yeah, that's. Uh, I, if I could tell you the answers to that question, I'd have another several million view video. Um, yeah, no, I uh, unfortunately do not know. The Elixni call it the Great Machine, and it certainly seems to have machine-like and mechanical bits inside it, which you can see by looking into the EDZ shard and seeing that 
There are just straight edges to it. However, there's something unmistakably alive about it too. The energy of the light and the fact that it creates this stuff seems to imply that there is something that's not entirely truly mechanical about it. You know, it's got to be alive in some regard. So yeah, not truly known. Yeah. Is it true that the bard is called Dr James at the start of Vi? Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> the bard's James. <laughs> I'm so confused. Just, just ignore him. Okay. <laughs> I was ready. I, I was ready for it to be like some kind of D's nuts kind of lead in. I was like, where is this going? What's this going to be? He's trying to connect the dots. He can do it. <laughs> so can the do can the okay? So this is obviously. I guess we're beyond spoiler territory now. So, like, do ghosts revive the Guardians, or does the Traveler? Where do you think we stand in that debate I see going on? Uh, ghosts most definitely revive the Guardians, but it is pretty clear that they need the light of the Traveler in order to do that, and for us to wield any of our powers in the first place. The Red War campaign taught us a lot about that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Whilst our ghosts have their own abilities, and, you know, they can help us replenish shields and whatnot, no ghost means no super, it also means no revives, when you have your ghost at the very beginning of D2, when you don't have your subclass yet, you have no abilities, you have nothing. And uh, the bareness of that experience teaches us a lot about why we need kind of both the ghost and a connection to the Traveler in the first place. So yeah, it's... Uh, you, you do kind of need both, but ultimately the ghost is the one that's performing the action. You know, if you just had the Traveler al alone, it wouldn't actually be able to revive you. Okay. So we do have a connection to the Traveler still, or no? Yes, through our ghost, uh, I think, is the best way to put it. The way I'd uh, look so at it, and it's not truly confirmed, is that the ghost is probably a conduit between us and the Traveler, right? Like, it's the halfway house. Yep. Gotcha. So it could, theoretically, Amanda could be rezzed. Ah, uh, yes, this whole question. Yeah, no, absolutely, Amanda could totally be rezzed. And uh, the way that everybody in the story keeps on going on about devotion, bravery, sacrifice... Uh, makes me think that that's where they will eventually take Amanda's story. Whether it's at the end of this season, or whether it's in the future season, or whether it's during Final Shape, or something even further beyond that, you know, that is the one common notation about Guardians that seems to indicate why they get rezzed, although it's not truly confirmed, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Having said that, Amanda getting rezzed is not going to be Amanda, just in the same way that Aldrin getting rezzed didn't give us Aldrin you know, it gave us Crow. So when right. Amanda does come back, she won't be Amanda. She'll be someone different. And that's worth remembering. Raid boss. Mm. What about the Hunter Vanguard? Is that getting, like, replaced? Could she do that? Entirely possible that either her or Crow would jump in. That's assuming that Amanda is a hunter, which I think is a somewhat fair bet, you know, all things considered. I would, uh, I would think that Crow steps into those shoes, though. You know, he's been teed up for it for years. It's one of those things where if he does eventually pick up the Ace of Spades near the conclusion of this saga, then uh, he's going to definitely fill into that role. What I would also say is that when it comes down to it, he's already taking on some of the duties as of the end of the season of The Haunted. He already talks even in this season about how he has reports from his hunters. So, you know, he's clearly working for the bigger operations of the Vanguard, generally. He's already filling in for the role as is. I think he's just not named, technically, yet. So, yeah, that's kind of where it is. I didn't actually know that. That's sick. Why did our ghost betray us in the campaign? <laughs> I, it wasn't... it wasn't conscious. It was possessed by the Witness. Unless there's a different moment you're talking about that I'm not no, thinking no, of. that one. Yeah, no, possessed by the witness at that point, no control. You know, we've seen that since Shadowkeep, we see it a little bit in Beyond Light. Whenever the witness takes control and possesses our ghost, it does not have a moment's clarity of itself. It just has the ability to sit back and watch as all of this goes down. It doesn't even necessarily have that, I think, actually, because the ghost does actually ask, like, what just happened? You know, like, it wasn't deliberately betraying us, that's the witness possessing it. How do we defeat something that just just ate the traveler, sliced him up, entered him, 
and then can control our ghost that is our life being. I think can you just make the ghost like go, you know, somewhere else? Entirely possible. But I think that that's uh, what we kind of need to explore in the next year or so, you know? We need to sit there and understand how we defeat a being of overwhelming darkness. And I think that everything this year is going to point us in the direction of if we're going to beat something like that, we need to use both light and darkness. Do you remember in the Black Garden we had the, like, clone of us that spoke to us? Was that the witness? That was most definitely the witness, yes. Oh, okay. The witness talks repeatedly about salvation. The witness is an individual that, if I'm remembering the stories of the Kentark Three, who also ventured into the Black Garden, uh, they've done that before, I think. I need to double check that lore because I'm not 100% on that, but I think that they have also done that uh, multiple times. Point being, like, yeah, that 100% was the witness doing it. Has there ever been an instance where two guardians have had a child? If so, would they wield the light? Uh, no. Guardians cannot have children, as best we know. They are sterile, but immortal. Uh, I think it's Zavala, actually, and uh, some words from Lord Saladin that give us a clear idea of this. You know, at one point he sits there and states, hey, Zavala, I need you to know that you will never have a son in that respect, but you can have an apprentice, you know. Zavala's son, Hakim, is an adopted son um, that him and his wife, Sophia, took under their wing. But ultimately, it's... Yeah, uh, Guardians, as best we know, cannot have children. Okay. Why does Kallus look different to Nez and Rolk? I mean, that's just the way Kallus is. When remade, his entire vision of perfection was opulence. Uh, and his idea of the final shape, I think, is very different to what Nezarek and Rolk's was. I'd also say that it totally depends on what's going on with each of the disciples. I mean, Nezarek, as we see them, is resurrected partly from darkness and partly from light. And when it comes down to... Rolk, they are the first disciple of the Witness, perfectly honed over billions of years, with expectations and pragmatism and practicality built on their own experience. Callus is fresh-faced and is much more influenced by his old self than Rolk would have been from Lubre. You know, every disciple is an individual, they're not uniform in that respect. Okay. So what is the chair in the story and what does he think its purpose is? Uh, do you, oh, you mean the chair in the final mission? Yeah, what do you mean, Geo? Yeah, I think, I think I know what they're talking about. Um, basically, the chair is an early prototype of something used to upload into the Cloud Ark. The Cloud Ark is the sort of shared web of consciousness that all the citizens of Neomuna will upload their consciousnesses into. Um, it's based and powered on the veil. It's something that allows you to delve into something without a physical body you know it lets you exist in a digital world and yeah they've even learned how to according to the last days law book where it goes on about all the citizens of neomuna they've even learned how to you know change avatars so it's a little bit like being in their own metaverse except without billions of corporations coming in to kind of like <laughs> claim dosh you know like <laughs> it's very different in that respect all right any other questions? I do can a ghost change guardians? I know a ghost can choose to leave a guardian. There is a... Ooh. So here's the thing. There is a question about whether a ghost can change guardians that is related to Shin Malfa and the Last Word. Now here's the thing. The ghost that, com that accompanies Shin Malfa is not his original ghost, because Shin is a guardian, right? Mm -hmm. Shin died as a baby and was resurrected in that moment by a ghost, right? That ghost mm -hmm. then died, and Shin did not know about it for his entire life, right? He grew up to become a very normal person and then realized that he could wield the light. Now, here's the thing. The ghost of the original wielder of the last word, a guy called Jaron Ward, saw that, recognized him, as did Jaron, recognized that there was potential and the ability to wield the light within him, and so they took him under their wing. 
When Jaren died and Shin inherited the last word, Jaren's ghost stayed alongside him and has been there ever since. Now here's the thing. Shin is a legend. Shin is, in the lore, one of the most enigmatic and almost unassailable figures that I think we've ever seen. So there is a very good possibility that in canon, he has never died. Which, I mean, you know, in the scale of things for a guardian is damn impressive. Think about that. He does wield the light. He does seem to have a connection to a ghost, aka Jaren's ghost, which makes me think that guardians can change. Because again, Shin kills Dredgen Yor, the wielder of Thorn, with a golden gun. You know, that means you have to have light, which means you have to be linked to a ghost. So there is an indication that maybe that's possible, possibly the case, but it's not widely expanded upon and it really isn't something that's well known. So whilst there are the pieces that you can put together in that way, there isn't really a true definitive word on it that has come down to a case that's really well studied, you know? Yeah. Like, I would say that yes, it is possible, but there's not much evidence to go on as far as like where that all comes in, you know? You'd need to look into things that are more imminent in the campaign. Do you only get one ghost? Like if your ghost gets shot, and you die, can another ghost just come and find you? I think that's possible, but again, it should be based on connection, you know? Because a ghost chooses their guardian very specifically and only reses particular guardians based on certain bits and pieces, right? Like, they need to res the right person, I think is the way of putting it. So finding another ghost that matches with a guardian is a little bit like... Hmm. What's a good way of putting it? Imagine you're... Having two soulmates. Yeah, exactly, like right? Or something. Yeah. A tooth... Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, whatever works. You wouldn't use your homie's toothbrush. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but you're also implying that there's someone else's toothbrush out there that you would use. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, I suppose, you know, we are talking about soulmates. So yeah, who knows? <laughs> if, you're, if you're down for that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Yeah, I think that might be it. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. That was awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks so much. Gigs. I'm even more confused now. It has been You're a pleasure. More confused. <laughs> oh, kid, kid. How's that? Yeah. What? But yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll have to do it again. Um, I don't know what raid we'll get in like five months or whatever it is. I mean, hey, when it comes out, as long as it's a. Uh, I mean, I guess as long, even if it is Lost Wish, which I don't think it will be, but even if it is a reprisal of Lost Wish, we'll be able to go ahead and do things. Because way back when, I've I've watched that video, and uh, boy, has uh, things have changed, and have I got things wrong <laughs> in that one? So yeah, we can retread that old ground if you like, but we'll definitely be, be happy to do a thing on the reprised raid when that comes out in six months. All right, sounds good. Excellent. To everybody who's watching this in the video format, by the way. Uh, go ahead and send some love over to everybody at Tier 1. Um, in particular, if you want to go ahead and support anybody who streams over there. I know that Giggs is live on Twitch on the regular. Uh, is there anybody else here who streams from the T1 team? Uh, I do. Alright, that would be Megs and Bullhorn, Luna, either of you two? Disco? Uh, Alright. I do not. Okay, so it's Giggs and Megs. You can go ahead and check them out on the Tier 1 side of things. Uh, if you are so inclined to go ahead and subscribe, they have been lovely hosts to all of this. Remember that subscribing on Twitch can be done free via Amazon Prime. Da -da 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 -da. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Get them Prime subs. Uh, and for everybody else, yeah, and it, for everybody else who's just watching this, as per usual, know that your viewership has always been quite enough for me. For Adasi Ardastra, I'll see you starside. See ya. <laughs>